Hi, this is Nick from Tilta. Today we're taking a look at the first firmware update for the Nucleus M2. In order to independently adjust the zoom rate for the up and down inputs of the zoom rocker, we'll first enter the menu by double pressing the menu button and navigating down to joystick rate. From there, we're able to navigate between the up and down options with the down arrow and then double click menu to select. From here, we can use the menu button to go up or the down button to go down. This will change the sensitivity for the down inputs as well as the up inputs. For example, with a lower rate for the down input, we're able to zoom out pretty slowly. But with a higher rate for the up input, we're able to crash zoom back in. This can be used for a couple of different creative purposes. You'll notice when the fizz unit is inactive and the hand grip is in control, you still have full use of the record button for run stop. However, when the fizz regains control on the same channel, you will no longer be able to use the run stop input on the hand grip. The new knob calibration process begins the same way by double clicking the menu button and navigating to calibrate knob. First, we'll need to calibrate the long throw counterclockwise. We can do so by moving the knob all the way to its counterclockwise position, making sure that the range switch is in a down position, indicating it is in its long throw position. Next, we'll double click the down button to confirm and move the knob the opposite direction. Now we'll need to calibrate the short throw, which will first need to move the range select or switch to the up position. You can double check this by moving the knob back and forth as it should be an incredibly short throw. We can then move the knob all the way to the counterclockwise position and double click the down button before repeating for the opposite side. Knob calibration is now complete and we can double check by making sure the throw stays between zero and 999 in both range options. If you'd like to control speed with the knob, you can now do so by entering the menu and navigating to knob number and setting that to off. We can use the record button to return to home. And as you can see, our knob now controls the speed for the zoom rocker. As you can see here, when the motor is under a heavy load, such as when using our speed pan system, there's a little bit of stuttering with how the motor moves the gear. In order to fix this, we've added a heavy load mode, which can be accessed through the menu and navigating to mode and then enabling heavy load. By comparison, you can see that you can achieve smoother results when using this mode in this type of situation. We've also fixed an issue where 24 volt power sources could cause the motor to draw excessive operating current. This eliminates any issues when using our motor with a 24 volt power source via a 3 pin Fisher run stop cable and still allows users to take advantage of the higher torque. Daisy chain motors can now be controlled by different controllers when on different channels. As you can see, our fizz is set to control focus and our hand grip is set to control zoom. We have our fizz unit set to channel six and our hand grip set to channel four, as well as our focus motor on six and our zoom motor on four. We then have power entering the focus motor and daisy chained to the zoom motor. If this connection is not immediately established, we can re-establish it by double tapping the function button in order to make the fizz inactive and then power cycling the hand grip by holding the record button. Once the zoom motor loses connection, the LED will start flashing and we can repower the hand grip. Without interference from the fizz, it should be able to establish connection. We can then reactivate the fizz by double tapping the function button. And now we should keep control on separate channels with separate controllers. As you can see here, we're able to lock the touchscreen of the fizz by holding the function button but we're still able to use the physical button, such as the record button. We can double tap the function in order to make the fizz unit inactive. We can use the mark button to set a mark, as well as delete that mark. And we can also calibrate our motors through the fizz, all while the touchscreen is still locked. 
can fix two issues with the auxiliary screen, one where overlapping information would be displayed at startup, and the other where the screen would flash white upon startup. We can swipe on the main touchscreen to the camera control interface, where we can see that we've replaced resolution control with iris control. We've also made it easier to edit marks once they've already been set. So as you can see, once we load a lens, we can go to the map option and see all of our previously mapped focus points. So in a situation where we land on a mark like two feet and we can see on the lens that it is physically a little bit off, all you need to do is hold enter to grab that focus point and use the wheel to adjust its final position. This will allow you to realign any focus points and fix any potential issues on a previously mapped lens. From there, we can use the save icon to save our changes. We've increased the time it will take for the unit to go to sleep from three minutes to 10 minutes and improved general system stability. We've also added some additional lenses to the lens library. We can access this in the menu by navigating to the lens page and then selecting lens list. From there, you can see we've added some ingenue options for easy one, two, and three. We've also added some RE options, such as the Master Primes and the Signature Primes. Here you'll also note that lenses are now ordered based on focal length. We've expanded our Atlas Mercury series to include the B set, as well as added the Extreme Zooms from Triopt. For Cook, we've included the 5 eyes as well as the S4 eyes. as well as the Fujifilm Premista. And lastly, we added the Nisi Athenas. We've added a setting to disable the auxiliary screens, which can be accessed via the menu, selecting Function, and then under the AUX screen settings, turning on or off. We fixed an issue where automatic screen brightness would permanently enable the iris slider LED. So if we enter the menu, navigate to function, and then select screen brightness, we can set this to auto and press menu to return, and then navigate down to slider LED, where we can turn this on and off. That was an overview of the first firmware update for the Nucleus M2. I'm Nick from Tilta. Thanks for watching.